Welcome to Bump Set Chat, the podcast where volleyball professionals come on and share their stories, experiences, and advice. From the Vegas Thrill, I have Tegan DeFalco. Welcome. Hi, Barry. Yeah, so glad you're here. And the way we start things off is we do three random questions. So are you ready? Yep, absolutely. So you're walking into the room. The TV is on. What TV show or movie is on the TV that you're stopping what you're doing and you're going to sit down and watch it? Okay, this is a great question. Um, Probably anything Disney related or animated because I love animation. Princess and the Frog, a classic. Mm -hmm. I'm stopping and I'm planting on that couch and I'm watching that one for sure. All right. You're coming home. What is the meal that you look forward to the most? Um, Coming home, meal I look for the most. It's probably my mom's meatloaf. Okay. Pizza meatloaf. Anything special about it or is just because it's made by mom? It's just made by mom and it's good. Excellent. All right. And last question. You're hitting the road. What's on the playlist? What's what what are you listening to? Oh, I have several travel mixes and some of the best ones are probably either island music from the Pacific Islands or Oh, gosh. I also love some indie rock, yeah. some indie pop, stuff like that. Yep. All right. Well, welcome to the podcast. Congratulations on signing with Vegas Thrill. You must be pretty excited. Absolutely. I'm really excited. It's definitely something that I never thought I'd be able to do. So the fact that it's an opportunity for women to play in professionally and to get paid for it is it's an honor. Truly. And to play in the States. Yes. It's such I'm very thankful because I. I hear a lot of girls that go overseas that are either have a really hard time being away from family or the experience is just not the same. So I'm very, I'm very excited that it's here. Absolutely. Yeah. I just had Mike Marshman on who's on team USA and he is, you know, his first year was in Finland and it's like, it's dark, you know, 30, 75% of the time. And he said it was, it was tough, you know, new country, different culture. It's yeah. It's not an easy thing. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah. So, all right. So let's get, let's go back to the beginning. You know, where are you from? Okay. So this is always a really tough question because I grew up in Missouri until I was around five. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to Southern California down in like San Diego area kind of um, until I was, and then kind of moved around California a whole bunch until I was 14. So I like to tell people that I'm kind of from California, but I did live in a lot of other places as well. So, all right. Works for me. And now where did volleyball begin for you? When did you first discover it? So volleyball for me, my family's always been playing. Um, So I was kind of always around it with older siblings or my parents playing in rec leagues, or I'm going to the, my sister's practices or being in the gym all the time. So I would say that I was probably around seven or eight when I started learning. But I didn't start playing club until I was around like 13 or yeah. 12 or 13. All right. Yeah. And now you talk about siblings. So where, you know, where do you rank with your siblings from an age standpoint? Yeah. So I'm number five. Um, so I'm uh, third oldest. Okay. Third, yep. I'm, I'm not saying that right at all, but <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying. Yep. <laughs> I'm number five. So. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Yeah. And now, you know, for you, you know, what was it about the volleyball that has, you know, that has hooked you versus other sports that you could play and, and everything like that? Yeah, I think that um, what got me really into volleyball was the complexity of it. Like, and I think that's what keeps bringing me back is that it's not just a sport that you get bored with because there's so many small details that you can get better at or that you're learning. Like, I feel like I don't even know everything about volleyball yet. Like I don't, I haven't even touched all the areas of how I can continue to grow as a player. So I think that that's what keeps me coming back and is what got me started in the first place. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. It's so volleyball is one of those sports where like, you'll just go play some pickup ball somewhere and you can always pick up something from some, you know, some old guys like, Oh, how do you do that shot? You know, something like that. Yes, absolutely. I love playing with some of the older generations of volleyball players because they played the sport differently and now Mm -hmm. the younger people are changing the sport a little bit and it's fun to have both generations kind of teach you something and see volleyball from a different perspective 
Yeah, absolutely. And now, you know, going back to your playing in club, you know, do you think club was important for you from a development standpoint to getting you to be able to play at that next level, being able to play in college and now beyond? Mm, definitely. I think that if I wouldn't have been as active in club volleyball, I wouldn't have been prepared for the transition into college volleyball. Um, I do think at my point in time when I was transitioning into college, it was 2017 when I started my freshman year in college, um, there were definitely not as much support as there is now. Yeah, I definitely think that more of the younger girls now have more um, resources than I did. But yeah. I do think that it prepared me for sure. Excellent. And what, what club did you play for? So because I moved around a lot, I ah. played for a lot of different ones. But I did play for A4 in um, – in Southern California. I've played for OTVA in Florida. Um, I played for Surf City. It's not even a club anymore in yeah. California as well. But yeah, I played for a few. And now, you know, when you played club, when club was over and you came back to high school, did you find it was like tough to go from, because when you play club, that level is like this. And then when you come back to high school, I don't know if it's the same on the West coast, but here on the East coast, <laughs> you know, I, like I got to talk my daughter off the cliff because like, okay, <laughs> you know, just be yeah. quiet. <laughs> Yeah, it's, don't don't complain too much. Um, I actually was homeschooled, so I didn't play in high school. Oh, okay, but I did go watch a lot of my friends. So I am not sure about that one. Yeah, all right. And so you know, bef what made you? What was your college path? Why did you end up playing at Grand mm -hmm. Canyon? Yeah, so this is a, um an interesting one because I because I was homeschooled, I didn't participate in the recruiting process very heavily yeah and i never really thought i was going to go to college um i was very much so under the impression that i would just help my family out and get a job and do all that kind of stuff yeah so when i was because i was still getting emails from coaches and i would respond but i didn't know how nobody was really helping me yeah. but tim nolan who was my head coach at gcu for my time there had sent me an email and pretty much was very clear about what he was wanting from me and um, kind of laid the ground rules that made it a lot easier for someone, a kid who had no idea if I even, I had no idea about college. Yeah. I didn't know anything about it. Um, so he sent me an email. It was very clear. And I just told my parents like, Hey, he's inviting me on campus. Um, what do you think? And it, since it was, I was in California at the time. So it was just a five hour drive. Yeah. My mom was like, I'll go with you if you want. And I was like, okay, yeah, let's go. Let's go check it out. And by the time the visit ended, um, I just kind of looked at my mom and I was like, do you like, is this an option? Is this viable? Or is, am I just like checking things out? Like, am I just doing this for fun? The experience. Yeah. And she was like, I think Tegan, if you really wanted to, you could do this. And I was like, okay. And so then I just, I called the coaches and I committed. Oh, Wow. Holy cow. Yeah. Now, what was that first year like? Oh, my gosh. Be uh, I just came from such – I had no idea what to expect. Right. And that's a hard place to be in, transitioning into college. Yes, absolutely. Because um, you didn't have a high school experience, and now you're no. into that next level along yes. with being you know away from home and everything else. Yeah, exactly. So it was – my first year was very challenging. Um, I was an outside hitter at that point and I had been kind of a six, two setter at, in club. So I was setting and hitting and, but they had transitioned me to a full outside. So that experience was also very new. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would definitely say that my first year was a struggle, but such a joy. Yeah. And it, I did, I learned quick. I learned quick how to make everything happen. Yeah. Oh, wow. And now, you know, knowing what you know now, if you could go back to, you know, freshman Tegan, what kind of advice would you have for her? Mm, I love this question. Um, oh, freshman Tegan, the advice I would give myself is to just be patient and to know that the world's not going to end and that, um, like, there's so much more to life than making others happy or a stat sheet or film there's so much more to life than what i think yeah Excellent. yeah awesome and then over those time you know for the years at grand canyon what what have been some of the highlights oh my gosh i loved my time at grand canyon it was such a specific experience grand canyon is not like a lot of other universities 
Um, everybody lives on campus. So some of my notables, like we had a game one year, I think it was my senior or no, my fifth year. Um, it was like 7,000 people in our stadium and we had a huge stadium. And I just remember walking onto the court and being like, whoa, everybody's <laughs> cheering so loud. The music's so loud. Like it was just such, it took, it was one of those moments it took your breath away. Yeah. And so that was a really big notable for me. Um, everybody on campus was so kind and the athletic community was like also a big notable. Everybody was so like willing to be helpful or, you know, it was just a really good environment. Yeah. Oh, nice. And now, yeah. you know, was there a certain, you know, what did you look forward to each year? Was there a certain match or a certain like senior night was always something special? Mm -hmm. Was there always something, you know, marked on the calendar? Like we can't wait for that date. Mm. I think, okay. I think for me, it was probably each time that we would play either. Oh my gosh. Probably Cal Baptist. I love playing against Cal Baptist. They were, they joined our conference a little later, mm -hmm. but every time we played them, it was like a dog fight. Like you knew that we were both going to give our best. And that kind of feeling when you walk onto a court is, to me unmatched when you know you have to play your best to beat that person or that that school or that team um but also i played the i played indoor and beach mm -hmm. both and so for beach it was like i loved traveling to southern california yeah. like that was yeah. traveling to all the beaches and going to, and then the national championship for beach volleyball like that was such an amazing experience for me yeah Nice. Yeah. And now playing beach and indoor, like you, you went to Grand Canyon to play indoor and then you, you know, pick, Oh, I'm, I'll play beach too. Or what was that sort of journey? Yeah. So at the time I was playing a lot of beach volleyball in Southern California when I was getting recruited for GCU and I was initially just getting recruited for indoor. Um, but I had had a conversation with the head coach because I had played in a beach tournament and the GCU coach saw that I was, I, like it was one of those tournaments where you write your school on you so that coaches can see if you're committed or not. Yeah. And I had wrote GCU on my calf or something like that. And the GCU coach was like, I didn't recruit you, <laughs> but then she would come and talk to me. And she's like, are you playing at GCU for beach volleyball? And I just said, Oh no, I'm playing at, I'm playing for indoor, but can I play both? And she was like, absolutely. And I would love to have you. So I then had a conversation with the indoor coach and cause with beach with indoor, you can, do both but with beach you can only do beach oh okay so i was very fortunate to be able to go to indoor and then also play beach oh wow that's so cool yeah. and so you so you started as a setter they moved you moved you to a hitter and you finished playing a libero yes so my freshman year i was an outside and then each beginning of each year my coach would always have me like during preseason he would have me hitting on the outside but then he'd be like ah be a libero <laughs> Cause then we would recruit taller girls. Thankfully mm -hmm. I, it was a lot of work to be an outside hitter as a five, seven girl. Like, Oh wow. Okay. It was, yeah. It was a lot of work. So then, and liberoing was, that was my first time liberoing my sophomore year of college. And I just had so much fun with it. Yeah. Like defense was always my specialty anyway. So it was a joy. Oh shoot. So now, you know, playing those three positions is libero your favorite. Oh, this is always a really tough question. <laughs> um, I would say, Oh, there are so many aspects. This is why I love beach volleyball because you can play, you're playing all of them. Right. Um, so uh, there's elements of libero-ing that I is unmatched, mm -hmm. but then I love being able to score. Like mm -hmm. I love being up at the top of the net and seeing an opening and then swinging. Like yeah. that's one of my favorite feelings as well. Yeah. Yeah. I had a uh, Micah Christensen on a while ago and you know, mm -hmm. he started out as a hitter and he reluctantly went to be a setter and he goes, you know, so he <laughs> walks into a gym, nobody hears the setter, but when you're a yes. hitter, it, you know, that'll snap heads. And it was like, uh, that was a funny, <laughs> funny way of putting it. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah, absolutely. So now, you know, from the beach game, what parts of the beach game really helped you for your indoor game? Mm, I think with beach, the most important thing was being able to track, like eye sequencing, being able to see what the hitter was doing and then moving efficiently. I think that that translated into indoor really well. Mm -hmm. um, and there was other, I mean, beach just makes you so fit and it makes right. you fast and it makes you attend, like 
attentive to the plays. And I think that that is something that was like made me a really well-rounded indoor player. Yeah. Excellent. And now, you know, when your time at GCU came to an end, you transferred to UW. Yeah. And what so was that? that? Was, yeah, that was a such, that was a tough um, call for me to make. I had finished up my time at GCU and, and I had known the coach, um, Derek Olson at UW. He had been on some of the travel trips as I had taken with the um, US or U21 team when mm-hmm. I went to Thailand. Um, and I had just known that he was a, like a well-rounded coach and had a good head on his shoulders. So I think that Kristen had actually reached out. My head coach for beach volleyball had reached out to him um, saying that I was kind of wanting to go there. I was wanting to be in Seattle. I was wanting to go to a big university like that. And so he had reached out and it just made it, it just streamlined it really, mm-hmm. really well. And yeah, went oh, to wow. UW, had an amazing experience. It was great. Excellent. And now, you know, on that UW experience, uh, what were some of the highlights that came out of that, you know, that time? Yeah. Um, it was my first time playing just one sport. Mm-hmm. Uh, so getting a year round experience of just beach volleyball was really a fun experience for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I also really loved the city. I yeah. really loved Seattle and it was just like such a, it, it was so beautiful, like the neighborhoods walking through them and the classes and being a part of a big university like that was, was a joy. Like yeah. it was so much fun. Um, and just, I just loved being able to hang out with like other students and be a normal student at what it felt like with yeah. playing two sports. It was like, I never really got to experience just being a student. Yeah. All right. And now when it comes to, you know, beach in college, are your partners rotating or do you, you know, do you match up with the partner and you, you know, stick with them? I think that it depends on kind of your team and the coaching style. Yeah. Some coaches will just be like, all right, this is your partner and this is who you're going to have for the rest of your time here. Yeah. And other coaches will kind of ask you like, do you feel good with this person? How do you, what do you think? And then like, I think that there's like just a range. And so from my experience, It was, um, I bounced around partners, Mm -hmm. I think on both, at both, both of my universities, depending on if you, if there's good, uh, camaraderie and right. A connection. Yes. Connection. Thank you. Yes, exactly. So. All right. And now, you know, for those freshmen coming into, you know, playing beach for at a college, what kind of advice do you have for them? Because it's not your normal sort of like team i would imagine from you know indoor volleyball you have like the lead you know the, the seniors you have the leadership established well beach is probably yeah. a little different yeah definitely um i would say for freshmen coming into college for the first time with beach volleyball i would advise them to be like take their time like take your time you don't have to be perfect right away you don't have to be with a perfect partner you don't have to like be the the all-star or the person that you think that you like should be like, take your time. It's your freshman year. It's, it's the beginning. You have four, four more years ahead of you. Um, and just really like be slow about it and ask yourself a lot of questions on what is working for you and what is not. And then adjust. Okay. And now like, you know, with college all wrapped up, what do you think you're going to miss the most? Oh, Oh, this is, it's such a hard question when you just are getting out of it. Um, and let me preface that with the other seniors or other players that I've had on, they -hmm. always talk about it's the locker room. Yes, it really is. Like all the girls that I talk to and when we're, when I'm talking with girls who are at the same stage as me, it's always being on a team. Mm -hmm. It's always travel trips, hotel rooms, like giggling and running through the hotels and like stuff like that. It's just, you can't, it's not a normal experience that people have outside of college. Like yeah, I could always go back and take classes and do that kind of stuff, but I could never be in a team environment again the way, well, here I am going and playing pro because this is what I missed about volleyball. Like yeah. being on a team. Yeah. Oh, wow. And now you talked about being on the U21 team. When did the national team sort of, sh- you know, when did you show up on the radar? What was that path? Oh gosh, <laughs> this is, a, I actually have no, it was my maybe sophomore year. 
playing beach volleyball, I think that I had done pretty well. That's I, I shouldn't say, I think, I know I did pretty well that season. And then going into my junior year, these years always get messed up. I think it was my sophomore year at the end of my season. I did pretty well. I got an email from the USA national team saying, Hey, we're inviting you to come do the U21 trials. Um, and then another girl had also got invited from my team. And so I, it was kind of, I think most of the moments in my life where something significant has happened, I've just been like, I'll, I guess I'll try. <laughs> and then I ended up going to the U21 trials in uh, Chula Vista and then ended up being teamed up with the, the girl that was on my team. Um, and we didn't, we didn't really know each other that well, but yeah. we ended up winning the whole thing together. It was actually a very magical moment wow. for me. And the, yeah. So, and that was just a, that was such, and then we won and then we went to Thailand oh, wow. as the main team it was really cool and what was that thailand experience like oh my gosh it was my first time traveling to an international country like that Mm -hmm. so it it was just very like the novelty of it kept me present the whole time Mm -hmm. it was just like whoa this is happening like i'm in thailand it was udon tani so it's like one of the it's not a huge city and it's Mm -hmm. not very touristy so it's like you're in thailand so that was it was just very unique and it was so much fun because of the uniqueness of it mm-hmm. and because of it just being like so drastically different than anything I've ever experienced. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, uh, did you eat anything, you know, very interesting on your trip? <laughs> yeah. I ate, we ate, we went to a dinner one night. Thankfully it was after competition because we got a little crazy trying things, mm-hmm. but um, I think I tried some duck brain, Ooh. which was odd. Uh-huh fine but odd i think it made one of my teammates sick the next day but um and like snake and something Ew, like that oh but my God. you're brave yeah. oh dear lord yeah. <laughs> you gotta try things when yeah. you go to these places oh yeah absolutely and now you yeah. know something that's unique with beach versus indoor is you know you really can't have an off game or whatnot because there's only two of you you you, you know it's you really yeah. gotta have that mental toughness yeah definitely i I mean, and it's hard too, because you do have tough games and then, you know, that's a lot of pressure. It's Mm -hmm. a lot of pressure to say, look at your partner and say, dude, I'm so sorry. Like I, for, I'm trying really hard, but I just can't pull it together right now. Yeah. And it really is nice to have a teammate who goes, Hey, no worries. Like I did have thankfully a teammate who was like, life is bigger than this game at this moment, which allows you to free up and Mm -hmm. allows you to play better. Thankfully I learned, but it's definitely a very specific experience that allowed me to grow a lot as a person to have that much pressure on you to play well consistently. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. And now, you know, another thing that's you know, unique with beach is there's tournaments where you have co-ed, you know, have any, yes. do you have your oh, brother nice. and yourself ever gotten into any tournaments? <laughs> um, I, that's actually odd that we haven't played in many tournaments together, but there is a, a tournament that I remember playing with him that I was like, I think maybe 14. Yeah. I I was good, but I was not that good. Yeah. And he was, he's two years older than me. So he was 16, 17, maybe at the time. Yeah. And we were doing eye formation because I, I wasn't playing very well. And it was like a, like a Valentine's day or like a, it was something down at Huntington beach that we had just decided to play in together. Yep. Like the whole family was playing and we were playing eye formation. Cause I just, he wanted to pass everything of course. And yep. I was like, okay, you pass the ball up and I'll set you. And we ended up getting like, I don't know, maybe I don't even know if we made it out of pool play, but (laughs) it's like the last time I remember playing with him in a tournament. Oh, very cool. Yeah. It's, you know, volleyball is one of these family sports. I had uh, Malaya Shoji on and I was Mm. asking, I asked her, you know, what are your backyard volleyball matches like? Because her dad (laughs) is, you know, coach at Utah, uncle Dave Mm -hmm. coached at Hawaii and then, you know, Kavika and and Eric is like, she goes, Mm. yeah. They were, you know, she couldn't remember the last time they played and she just, yeah, they were, they were wild ones. Yes. We, my family makes up a lot of volleyball games. Like I, my dad built a, uh, like a, a swing that has these big, and it's like close to a volleyball net and yeah. we play yeah. over that. Like we'll <laughs> tie a string up in the backyard. Like that's, <laughs> I think how most of my siblings have gotten good at volleyball, especially TJ. Yeah. Because we would just like, and TJ was always the one that led, like we would go outside and be like, all right, we're setting up a court and we're playing quick touch volleyball. Like we'd make up different rules. Yeah. And it just, 
it made volleyball fun, which yeah. I think made it easier to play it for a long time. Very nice. Awesome. And now did you play any other sports growing up too, or was just volleyball was, was the sport? Um, uh, not really. I think I played softball one year, but yeah. volleyball was the sport. Nice. All right. And now, you know, college was done. Um, now you're going to be a professional volleyball player. Was that in the cards or what was your game plan now that, you know, college had wrapped up? Yeah, it was not in my cards at all, yeah. honestly. I, cause I had finished at UW last year in June and then I'd ended up in October or no, 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 November. I had decided to just move to Portugal for seven months. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So I just got back from Portugal in May, um, this year. And so, and I really wasn't planning on, I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to be out of the volleyball scene for a while. I wanted to go just, uh, like take myself out of that identity of being a volleyball player and mm -hmm. seeing if I had any other passions to go in different directions. And then when I came back to the States, I had been hanging out with some friends and some of them are playing in PVF and had played last year. And they had just said, dude, I don't like, you should try, you should do this. And I was like, Oh, maybe. But then I had just reached out to some of my friends who had played and mm -hmm. I was like, is this a possibility? What was your experience like? And they're like, you need to do this. Like, it's fun. It's fun and it's worth it. Yeah. So, Excellent. yeah. And now, what was that process? Did you have to go try out? Because you had a seven-month hiatus where you haven't touched a ball, yeah. and now you're to get back up to game speed and everything like that. So I guess let's go back to how did you end up getting on the radar? Did you reach out mm -hmm. to them, or did you go for a tryout? Yeah, so um, last summer, I had done a lot of – training with some of the professional girls like alicia glass is somebody who i met last summer um playing and molly mccage just i had been asked if i could sub in and practice with the girls yeah and yeah you know, i was just playing beach at the time but i was like yeah sure i hadn't played indoor in two years like <laughs> yeah i'll come hop in and so um i did and i just ended up being like three or four times a week and a lot of the girls there were like, are you going to play pro? And I was like, no, I'm going to Portugal, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, they were like, dude, you should, same thing, like, you should try. And then, but then I, I was very determined to go do something volleyball, not volleyball related. But then when I had come back, Alicia was the first person that I'd reached out to who was like, okay, Alicia, you just had your first year. Tell me about it. Can you help me out? Um, what do you think? And she was like, yes. Okay, let's do this. And so that was kind of the process. And then I got in contact with the coaches and I had a really good conversation with Fran. She, I just have a lot of respect for her. Um, and then I think that that's just kind of how it went down was they were like, okay, yeah, let's, Excellent. let's, yeah. Wow. And now, you know, do you know any of the players that you're going to be playing with next season? So Alicia is on the team again, which I'm super thankful for. I do know Kendall white. Um, who is the other libero who signed. And then I'm trying to think if I can remember anybody else. I know a lot of these girls just by name, just yeah. because we're in the community. So I feel like that's where a lot of, I think I know a lot of the teammates that way. Yeah. Okay. And now, you know, the season doesn't start until next January. What is your sort of, you know, how are you going to stay in tune? Are you going to, you know, hook up with some of the other girls and just, you know, get some gym time somewhere? Yeah. So that is, I've been doing that since early July, just getting in the gym, rehabbing, doing a lot of uh, workouts and stuff like that, just to make sure that a lot of this to me is making sure that you have the, like the buildup of mm -hmm. making sure that you've been taking a lot of reps for a while. Like I would never just show up and be like, okay, I'm here. Right. Like, <laughs> that would be a rookie mistake that I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so I, we, a lot of the girls that I know in Southern California um, are training mid August to September. And then yeah. some of the AU play, but for the most part, that's who I'm training with. All right. Very cool. Yeah. And now back in the college days, did you have any pregame rituals? You, you needed to have a certain meal or you needed a nap? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thankfully I was like super anti um, what's the word? superstitious mm -hmm. super anti-superstitious so i never tried to think about like if anything my routine was to not have a routine yeah because i was like nope i'm going 
I always locked in. I always had a mental routine of mm -hmm. making sure that I'm thinking about the game or if I, I'm not thinking about the game until I cross the line and then, okay, it's, it's game time. Like I'm relaxed. This is just another day breathing. If I was nervous, I allowed myself to be nervous, but at a certain point it was always when the national anthem was going on. Yeah. I would sit with my eyes closed and I'd lock in pretty much. Yeah. And just know that now is the time to, I have three points that I'm allowed to be anxious for mm -hmm. if I'm really, really anxious. But after those three points, it was like enough is enough. Let's go. Yeah. Excellent. All right. And now, you know, for those sneaker heads out there, you know, what are your favorite shoes you play in? Or do you have a real a, a f favorite pair? Yes. Okay. Nike is my go-to always. Mm -hmm. um, there is one pair that was like a Kobe Bryant line pair that I don't know what they were called, but I can picture them in my mind. I still have them. It's like, I never kept any of my other shoes, but these shoes I kept because they were just perfect. Mm -hmm. And I can't, I wish, I don't even think I ever knew what they were called, but they were a Nike Kobe Bryant line yeah. shoe and they were great. Excellent. All right. I got a couple of questions for you. One from a coach and one from a high school player. So the coach question is what have been some of the little things that have made you a better passer? Hmm. I would say some of the better things is really working on being patient mm -hmm. and working on simplifying my movements and making sure that there is like, I'm streamlining what I know is going to make me a good passion, which is staying low, staying strong, creating angles and holding and making sure that I'm repeating that consistently so that it's not like only happening one or two times like I have to make sure that this is a habit that I don't even need to think about I just need to wait for the ball and know that my training is going to back me up yeah all right excellent now the high school question is how do you stay mentally tough in a, a tough pass receive or serve receive mm. Mm. um in those situations the way that I stay tough, especially if I shank a ball or if I'm kind of those nerves are ramping up that I'm like, oh, I'm not playing very well. Or what if I miss this pass? The first thing I do is I start naming facts. I start going, OK, I'm in the GCU arena. I've got these shoes on. I start taking myself out of mm -hmm. those out of that sh that mindset that it's like, what if, what if, what if it's like, no, no, no OK, I'm wearing black sleeves. I've got my purple jersey on. There's people in the crowd I just start making it like very objective so that uh, my emotions can kind of be compartmentalized yeah okay and now you know something that's I've noticed over the last couple of years with you know with I guess defense and liberos is you're seeing more of the chasing down the ball and doing that open hand scoop thing now yeah. is that in your rep your bag of tools or are you sort of the old school you know close hand and, and pop it up mm, I would say I haven't fully developed that like mindset or that habit to have that open hand like dig yet. Yeah. But I definitely say that it's, it's something cause I use the back of my hand a lot. Oh, okay. Cause that's something that I feel like is efficient because it, it extends your arm. You're, you're closer to the ball, I guess. Right. But um, yeah, I think that I would be, I will be utilizing that in my training at some point in time. All right. So now I got a fun one for you. So I had Eric Shoji on a while back and him and Taylor got this Taylor, Taylor Alvo got this thing, you know, what's the toughest position in volleyball. So now oh. I, you know, Tegan, <laughs> let's get your take. What is the toughest position in volleyball? <laughs> I love this question. All of us volleyball players talk about it at some point in time or another. It's been a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I've always taken the stance that middle blocking is one of the hardest positions but I also, from experience, feel like like an outside hitter is – there is so much pressure to score, and you're getting all the junk balls. You're getting all the out-of-system balls. Mm -hmm. Also have the pressure to pass and then, ro like, swing. Yeah. So I would say either middle blocking because there's no way you're going to get me to split, like, transition block and do all that kind of stuff. There's no way. But also, I've also got to throw the barrel of – like living is hard. Mm -hmm. Living is no position in volleyball that's easy per se, but yeah. 
if I had to pick one, I guess I will tell you it's middle blocking. All right. So I had Mason on Mason Briggs and he picked mm-hmm. libero and he, I'd never thought of this before this way, but he goes mm-hmm. as a libero, you have one thing, the pass you can't mm-hmm. as an outside hitter, you can block, you can hit a point, you can mm-hmm. dig, you can serve libero. You got one thing and you can't yeah. be bad at it. I was like, Oh, you know what? That's yes. Yeah, that's, that's a tough thing from a mental standpoint. Mm-hmm. That's true. I've never really, I had not thought of it from that yeah. point yeah. before. But to argue that, I would also say if you are not, you only have one thing to focus on, which is really nice for mm-hmm. some types of players. Yeah. But for like an outside hitter or a setter where you, or middle blocking or whatever it is, it's like you have multiple things and you have to be like, okay, remember to do this. Remember to do this. Very do this. Valid. Do this. Yeah. It's like, Whew, that's tough. That's yeah. hard. It's great. Oh. Yeah. So now, you know, away from the court, away from volleyball, away from beach, what are some things you like to do? Mm, I am a very avid reader. I will read like 12 hours a day, literally. Um, Or I, my sister's a horse trainer and Mm -hmm. I grew up riding horses. So I'll either go and do that or I love being in the outdoors. I love activities. I love playing spike ball. Lots of lots of activities like that. Ah, and now you know what are the top three books Tegan would recommend? Ooh, okay. Well, these are going to be kind of basic, which mm-hmm. I typically would not <laughs> say, but they're tried and true. I'm I'm not going to negate that from them. Um, A Court of Thorns and Roses is that series is really good. It's one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, Throne of Glass also one of my favorites, and Harry Potter. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that one. <laughs> you can't go wrong with Harry Potter. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, hey, you survived the podcast. Really appreciate <laughs> you coming on and doing this. But before you yeah. go, like with past guests, I look for them to shout out somebody in your volleyball circle, past or present, that has a good story that you think should come on. Okay. Let me think about this for a moment. Yep. Oh, goodness. Probably Andrew Sato. Okay. Yes. Now, who's Andrew Sato? Andrew Sato was a libero at Long Beach during the same time as my brother. Okay. And his dad was, is, or was, I can't remember, but he is a big name in the volleyball community, especially in California. Um, and I think that he has a really interesting story with volleyball. He's also the assistant coach at Cal right now. Okay. Um, but yeah, I All think right. that that's probably a really good person. Excellent. Well, hey, thank you so much for doing this. It was wonderful to meet you. Good luck next season. Thank you so much. Hey, she's a beauty.